sitcom stars, an eclectic personality, a political philosopher, and an undercover police officer. These are the celebrities that we invite you to remember and uncover the lesser-known details behind their deaths. Raised in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, after high school, he attended Morehouse College, where he met and became friends with Spike Lee. William Goldwyn Nunn III made his debut in the 1988 film School Days, but is broadly distinguished for his poignant role in Do the Right Thing as Radio Rahim. 20 de-energizers. 20 de-energizers? D, not C, D. Among his repertoire of movies are titles such as New Jack City, Sister Act, and Runaway Jury. He lost his life to leukemia on September 24, 2016, at the age of 62. Beloved on both The Jeffersons and All in the Family, Michael Evans wasn't just a talented actor, he was also a creator and writer for Good Times, one of the first sitcoms to feature a primarily black cast. Evans was 57 years old when he died of throat cancer in 2006. Tommy Lister was born with a detached and deformed retina that permanently left him blind in his right eye. Pressing forward, he excelled athletically in shot put, becoming the NCAA Division II national champion in the early 80s. His trajectory shifted when he was lauded for his performance as Debo in the first two Friday movies. Amidst his triumphs, he struggled with type 2 diabetes and COVID-19. Unfortunately, his life was cut short in December 2020, while he was still in his prime, as a result of hypertensive cardiovascular disease, a condition that affects the heart and blood vessels. He was 62. A seasoned Hollywood veteran, Mary Alice, initially made a name for herself in the 70s movie Sparkle, on TV, she is fondly remembered as the new resident director at Gilbert Hall on A Different World. Her career incorporated television roles in All My Children to film engagements in Malcolm X and The Inkwell. Hello, Aunt Francis. Hello, sweetheart. Oh, Lamont, let me get you a cold glass of milk. Now, now, wait a minute, Francis. Now, if my son's exhausted, if he wants something, I'll get it for him. That's my job. And if you're going to arrest people for dancing, maybe you're the one who needs some advice. Because there are a lot worse things these kids could be doing than dancing. On July 27, 2022, she peacefully slipped away in her Manhattan residence at the age of 85 due to natural causes. Acclaimed for his portrayal of Baron Samedi in the Bond film Live and Let Die, Jeffrey Holder was initially a principal dancer for the Metropolitan Opera Ballet in New York City. He changed careers in 1956, emerging in the maritime film Carib Gold. Movies weren't his only successful endeavors. Conversely, he served as a pitchman for 7-Up advertising campaigns in the 70s and 80s. Now, don't you feel good about 7-Up? Of course you do. <laughs> as a choreographer, he won two Tony Awards for his work in the all-black musical version of The Wiz. He featured in a multitude of films such as Annie, Goose, and Boomerang. In October 2014, Jeffrey crossed over at the age of 84. He had been ill with pneumonia. Designing Women still ranks highly on most people's list of funniest sitcoms of the 80s, and Massage Taylor's character Anthony Bouvier certainly added to the show's humor. From 1993 to 1997, he was a series regular as plastic surgeon Sheldon Baylor on Dave's World, and had a recurring role on Nickelodeon's Ned's Declassified School Survival Guide. In like manner, he made appearances on What's Happening Now, In the Heat of the Night, and Criminal Minds. Hi, four eyes, remember me? Buddy, my man! <laughs> I see your mama is dressing you better these days. What was that noise, dear? Just our son, Duncan, making it with some sexy babe in his room. Boy, was she stacked. <laughs> Tragically, he succumbed to colorectal cancer on June 28, 2014. Clarence Williams III broke new ground as Detective Lincoln Hayes on the Mod Squad from 1968 to 1973. He had a diverse career spanning TV, film, and stage, and perfectly embodied versatility in a conglomerate of genres as Prince's abusive father in Purple Rain, funeral director Mr. Sims in Tales from the Hood, and Wesley Snipes' heroin-addicted dad in Sugar Hill. He was diagnosed with colon cancer only a month before his passing in 2021, at the age of 81. In addition to a role on A Different World, Lou Myers often portrayed a cantankerous elder across countless motion pictures, such as How Stella Got Her Groove Back and The Finding Temptations. Well, if you and Whitley ever have need of a catered affair, I make a mean heart-shaped meatloaf. <laughs> he died after bearing a number of health setbacks in February 2013. 
A native of St. Louis, Missouri, Moses Gunn commenced his career in off-Broadway productions before transitioning to Broadway, then to the big screen distinctly with depictions in Shaft, Ragtime, and The NeverEnding Story. His TV performances include the 1977 miniseries Roots and Good Times as Florida's new love interest subsequent to her husband James's death in an automobile accident. Oh, Florida, you look great, just great. Looking mighty handsome yourself. Mm. Well, since we're both uh, gorgeous, <laughs> why don't we go eat? He departed this earthly life in 1993 at the age of 64 from asthma complications. The loss of Yvette Renee Wilson was one of the most shocking celebrity deaths of 2012. She performed stand-up comedy before landing a role on the short-lived sitcom Thea. Her filmography comprises the blockbusters House Party 3, Friday, and Poetic Justice. In 1996, she secured her most famous role as Andel Wilkerson on Moesha, a figure she seamlessly reprised on the spin-off The Parkers from 1999 to 2004. Yvette was a survivor of a kidney transplant, but eventually lost a battle with cervical cancer, which metastasized throughout her entire body. Renowned for his avant-garde accomplishments in a time when black actors were rarely cast, Paul Winfield is famed for his role as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in a 1978 three-day television installment. He was also seen in the films Carbon Copy, The Terminator, and Mars Attacks. Additionally, he was a voice actor for the cartoons Spider-Man and The Simpsons. He died of a heart attack in 2004, aged 64, after long battling obesity and diabetes. Mel Stewart played Henry Jefferson, George's brother and Archie Bunker's neighbor on All in the Family. He then scored main roles on Scarecrow and Mrs. King and One in a Million, a situation comedy developed for Shirley Hempel following the success of What's Happening. According to the Los Angeles Times, he passed away in February 2002. The cause was Alzheimer's disease. The towering Bubba Smith, who stood at 6 foot 7 inches tall, earned All-American honors twice at Michigan State University before being the first overall pick in the 1967 NFL Draft. He spent nine professional seasons playing for the Baltimore Colts, Oakland Raiders, and Houston Oilers. After the conclusion of his football career, he moved into acting, notably as soft-spoken officer Moses Hightower in the Police Academy film series. Smith died on August 3, 2011 from an overdose of the weight loss drug Phentermine, coupled with pre-existing heart disease and high blood pressure. He was 66 years old at the time of his death. His heart weighed more than twice that of a similar male his age, and he had 75% blockage in some vessels. In 2016, it was announced that he had a concussion-based brain disease called chronic traumatic encephalopathy a neurodegenerative illness that affects an unknown number of former athletes who participated in contact sports. The findings were confirmed by researchers affiliated with the Department of Veterans Affairs. Lynn Thigpen exhibited fearlessness in the 1989 film Lean on Me. What happened this morning is an outrage. Our kids don't deserve this. Some of those children are smart. They're just discouraged about what chances they got out there. Her involvement in other films and television series encompasses Give Me a Break, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, and Bicentennial Man. She died suddenly of a cerebral hemorrhage in 2003 at the untimely age of 54 after complaints of intense throbbing headaches for several days. Her passing created a void in the world of entertainment as her character Ella Farmer had to be written out of the remaining three episodes of the third season of The District. On the Disney Network, her absence prompted a three-year hiatus for the fourth season of Bear in the Big Blue House, where she voiced Luna the Talking Moon. Ben Powers became a familiar face in the sixth and final season of Good Times, when he portrayed Thelma's football player husband. After the show, he made appearances in the films The Man Who Loved Women, alongside Burt Reynolds, and two Cheech and Chong movies. Added to that, he was a regular on the detective drama Mike Hammer. He disappeared from the Hollywood scene in 1985, and in 2015, his family announced his demise at the age of 64 from the ravages of liver cancer. Inspired by Billie Holiday, Lincoln Kilpatrick's acting debut came in 1959 with the Broadway production of A Raisin in the Sun. While he appeared in a string of supporting roles in movies throughout the 60s and 70s, his most fervently celebrated character was that of Lieutenant Michael Hoyt, a pillar of justice on the crime-solving TV program Matt Houston. Wait, I'm in the middle of planning a wedding. No one forced you to be a hotshot P.I. Lung cancer claimed Kilpatrick's life in 2004. 1999's The Green Mile stands as one of the most emotionally touching films of all time. 
Michael Clark Duncan's on-screen chemistry with seasoned actor Tom Hanks significantly contributed to its boundless resonance. Duncan appeared in a plethora of films such as Armageddon, The Whole Nine Yards, Planet of the Apes, and The Scorpion King. When we last met, you offered to kill me. Now I have a chance to return the favor. Bring the woman to me! He suffered a heart attack in July of 2012. Two months later in September, he died of respiratory failure. He was 54 years old. Baritone voiced actor Roscoe Lee Brown had a prolific career that dates all the way back to the 1960s when he first began appearing in films, television shows, and stage plays. He was a frequent guest star on TV in both comedy and dramatic shows such as Soap, Benson, and Falcon Crest. His talents extended to narration, voiceover work, and stage directing. He entered into eternal rest on April 11, 2007 at the age of 84 after losing a battle with stomach cancer, leaving behind a legacy of artistic excellence and activism. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it valuable, please consider subscribing to our channel.